We'll start obviously with the fact that Mr. Macron and France are um, trying to be really, uh, how to put it politely, uh, pretending what they are not actually, to be what they are not. But we already know that combined West also is just absolutely going bananas over Russia's election because they know that Vladimir Putin is essentially re-elected. He is, there's no contest, you know, and uh, the uh, issue here is extremely simple. More than 80% of Russian people approve his work. And Russia, which was supposed to be somehow, you know, disintegrating by now and being split into the several statelets, uh, is not doing so, you know, totally contrary to the, all those, you know, forecasts and ideas of all those so-called learned men, you know, and women in the U.S. establishment who thought that by now Russia would be, you know, I don't know, maybe Ukrainian troops will be somewhere in, in and around Kremlin, I don't know. But this is what they thought. And, you know, you cannot blame them anymore. They are products of their system and they are Okay, as I already continue to repeat again and again and again, it's they're uncultured, very badly educated, and they have no toolkit. Which brings us to the issue of the situation on the Russian border, which of course have been precipitated by the, all those attempts of the Western uh, countries, which openly now Russian uh, uh, officials say that the United States is now basically resorting to terrorism, and so do the, all those European chihuahuas. And here it is, and this is what Mr. Putin stated, that Russian intelligence learned about a possible attack by the armed forces of Ukraine on the Russia border in two weeks in uh, before, uh, well, actually prior to two weeks, and already took all necessary measures to meet those guys. And Zarubin, as when he was talking to Vladimir Putin, uh, uh, he was speaking to in his interview, and this is what um, Mr. Putin stated. And he said, in connection with the information received, the Supreme Commander in Chief of Russia, Vladimir Putin, instructed to withdraw conscripts from the state borderline to the second and third echelons and replace them with contract soldiers, volunteers, and special forces fighters. And all those attacks, you can easily find that in the RT and other uh, normal, uh, relatively normal news outlets, what it all ended uh, for Ukraine and Ukraine forces. They have been absolutely decimated. They never crossed the border, obviously. And now they are withdrawing civilians from the Sumer region. So, and this is probably another attempt to, well, what they, they wanted to basically spoil the elections for Vladimir Putin because evidently Vladimir Putin is God in the West. They think that everything they attribute to what is happening bad in the West is all the fault of Vladimir Putin. It's for in the first place and second of Russians just because they are Russians. And uh, as a result, uh, the previous two attempts, they saw more than 550 KIAs, more than 1,000 wounded, and decimated basically this brigade size force, which was trying to do their raid, which is essentially was the, the raid being the incursion into the territory, maybe take the some village, kill all civilians there, or all men most likely, put the Ukrainian flag, make the photo of the Ukrainian flag over some official building in some village, and then send it to Washington to show that, hey, you know what, we are good at PR, look at this, we are attacking Russia. So everything w failed miserably with catastrophic uh, um, losses for all those forces. If that hasn't been enough, speaking of Mr. Macron, Russia struck Odessa yesterday and today and killed a number of the French primarily but there are the foreign mercenaries there and this is kind of message to Mr. Macron who still uh, exercised this stupid idea that if he sends some uh, French troops and special forces French special forces which got their ass kicked in uh, uh, Africa so that it somehow will prevent Russians from, if they need to, to take Odessa. So it absolutely means nothing. I mean, Maria Zakharova already very specifically spoke about this, that actually France pretends that it really matters. It doesn't. And they uh, want to really basically split, you know, partition Ukraine and place somehow some French interest in the city of Odessa, which is, of course, a hotbed of all those British, American, uh, French mercenaries, uh, volunteers, quote-unquote, who are 
uh, arrived there primarily and the Russians basically sent a message yesterday to Mr. Macron that it doesn't matter who those are and of course you know they will be hunted down and killed and it doesn't matter if they're special forces or not special forces yes uh, my uh, good friend Marat Khairulian already reported from the front lines uh, and it seems like that the only thing he does is <laughs> fighting somewhere there with, with all kinds of the uh, units is that yeah he says the regular infantry for example the Slavyanka Brigade those special forces will let they better not meet with the regular infantry because they will be wiped out that's how good they are those people if they want to meet Russian special forces my god I wouldn't be really you know I wouldn't want to be in their place to start with so yeah Macron can send whatever he wants so it doesn't matter as I already stated, they will be either hunted down and annihilated or surrounded, taken prisoners, so they, there is no chance. And of course, France simply has no forces to do anything about it. And that was the message, basically. Well, also a message to all other the adventurists who think that they are really so good. They are not. NATO is a paper tiger and that fact has been really established. But uh, speaking of which, even Washington Post, I mean, it cannot, uh, you know, deny this, you know, and it was done yesterday and again, bunch of some kind of writers who do not know what they are writing about, but still even they admit in Washington Post that uh, U.S. officials foresee a range of bleak scenarios in Ukraine if the military aid President Biden has requested doesn't materialize, including a catastrophic breakdown of Ukrainian lines in the grimmest contingency and the likelihood of a massive casualties in the best. Well, let me put it this way. Those scenarios are already basically happening, so nothing you can do about it. And again, people do not understand. United States simply has nothing to provide Ukraine with, unless it goes to the non, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the bottom of the barrel basically you know and start using its own stocks of the weapons but then again it makes no difference you probably already saw the russian uh infantry and russian you know uh, soldiers on the front line saying please send more abrams thanks we need you know just it's, it's a good business you know uh, around hundred thousand dollars for uh single abrams hey why not so this is what is happening there. But if that hasn't been enough, now we have, which I actually wrote in my blog, and it needs to be discussed because it is a wowzer. But before we go there, here is the very interesting revelations from the former chief of the Czech intelligence service, General Peltz, speaking to the Radio Universum in Prague uh, a week ago. He is talking about, and this is the guy who was heading the Czech, you know, um, intelligence service, and as most of the Western uh, uh, officials, especially military officials, with the exception of people like Ben Hodges or Bridloff, and other those uh, generals such as Petraeus, most of them, when they go and retire, they suddenly just, you know, get this common sense view on the uh, outside world. And hear what uh, Mr. Pell stated. Uh, when uh, in his uh, interview to this uh, radio universe on that, well, we had it. According to General Pels, the goal of the West is to weaken Russia, ideally the division of Russia, into several states. After all, this was discussed in 1992 when American defense planning was being done, where there was a sentence that it was necessary to deter any competitor who would even dare to think about playing more significant role regionally or globally. Uh, yes, uh, Russians know this and Russians obviously laugh and uh, those attempts because uh, as I already stated, people who were writing this, they were really overestimating for all greatness of the United States, but they grossly overestimated their capabilities and grossly underestimated the capabilities of others, as the situation with Iraq and Afghanistan has shown us. But Pels doesn't stop there. He produces this very interesting revelations and he is talking that uh, Russia wants to negotiate, in my opinion, but listen to what he states, which is what many people still do not understand, because everything the Western press does is spin, and they basically misinterpret everything Russian officials tell them. And here's Mr. Pels, his general, 
who speaks openly about it. Russia wants to negotiate. It quite sincerely wants to negotiate. But it wants to negotiate on what was described in the note of the United States and NATO on December 17 and 21, known as Russian ultimatum. And Russia will not negotiate anything else. It will negotiate the arrangement of the security architecture in Europe and the world, but it will not negotiate whether to stop shooting in Ukraine. This is what Vladimir Putin speaks constantly, but because, as I already stated, this whole ultimatum, and this whole, as they call it, ultimatum, uh, and those points which are actually described in it, and tell that NATO better roll back to the borders of 1997, uh, I mean, they want to spin it, but then again, being uh, as a, being in the same room with the average uh, corporate American or a British journalist requires a serious course in antibiotics and supervision of the doctors, infectionists. So, you know, but this is what it, it is exactly all about. And Mr. Pels, to his greatest credit, granted that he does it being retired now, he describes it the way it is. And he's talking about that Biden said he was willing to discuss it in the beginning. But guess what? But then they apparently forbade him to do so, discussing this, obviously, ultimatum. That was still in December. 14 days later, and sometime in early January, the Americans told the Russians to forget about the, the Americans had ever negotiated with them on such a topic. Yes, because as I already stated, they have no clue what America is in Washington, D.C. They do not understand. They know only financial part of it. They expect or anticipate rather financial collapse, but they do not understand military capability. None of them understands military capability, uh, with the exception of few generals here and there. Pentagon doesn't understand what real war is, because they never fought one. And so we have now uh, uh, Mr. Uh, um, Bell's continuing, and he is saying things which, you know, I've been saying and writing about for years. America is paying for it when he's talking about the Bretton Woods, because the so-called dedalization is gradually taking place. And I think that this process is already unstoppable today, because on the one hand, Russia perceived this as, as the most important moment of their foreign policy, and the war in Ukraine is just a battle in the great war of the dedalization. Bingo! Finally, we have the guys who are talking about, you know, in the broadsides, and this is a very essential broadside, because it is in the end of the removing the dollar from what it did to the global economy and unleashed, uh, I mean, in numerous, innumerable uh, uh, amount of wars, a number of wars, if you wish. And so this is what it is, and the only pillar on which dollar rests today it is mythology, mythology, it's not there really, uh, of the American military power. I mean, America is still powerful, it can unleash nu thermo nuclear war and the world will die. But in terms of the conventional large-scale combined arms operation, it is nowhere near, for example, Russia. And here what he states, that's Mr. Pels, because you will not find it in Anglo-American media. Because they understand, they have been exposed, and NATO have been exposed so dramatically. So, and hear what he says. But one military rule that I read somewhere says that the battles are won by weapons and soldiers, and wars are won by industry and logistics. And that's it. It is a question of what we call military, and what we label as no longer military. I'm not sure how the um, automatic translation did this. But in the two years of the conflict, Russia has increased the output of its military industry 15-fold. 15 Fault. Think about it. Of course, we are not able to do that. And I'm speaking as the West, because we have financialized our economy. We are just in the business of lending money, and we are trying to make you all rentiers. Period. Bingo. He said it all. And this is what I've been talking about for nonstop for years, that once the mythology, which has happened already, actually, of the American military power is removed from the uh, picture, what's left? Well, nobody watches really NFL in the world, you know, so baseball is, yeah, is a good sport, but what's left? 
well, what's left is the degenerate pop culture and Oscars, which nobody watches anyway. So, and, you know, one or two Hollywood movies which still uh, bear a little bit of the artistic value. So, yeah, the rest of it is complete trash, actually. And uh, it's accelerated at Obama's uh, uh, first administrations. And, of course, uh, uh, Biden administration is the third Obama administration. And what we have, we have this dissolution of this myth and uh, the country have been literally driven into the ground and it has no search capacity and most importantly and we're coming now to the main point today it's losing its technical expertise at an astonishing rate i'm not talking about the boeing 737 which again today one of the panels flew uh, away from the plane uh, and it had to uh, in, you know, land in portland but the point is Look at this. This is a wowser. This is a shocker. Uh, we have this as, huh, guys, this is defense news. This is not some kind of Martiano propaganda, all right? As many people would claim that I'm, you know, Russian propagandist. No, I'm not. But here it is. Nevertheless, next generation submarines start to early 2040s. Remember, today is 2024. To early 2040s, it could be anything between 2041 to 2045. And guess what? The U.S. Navy is pushing back the start of construction of its next generation attack submarine by nearly a decade, signing tight budgets and the need to fund current and near-term operations. As I already stated, the United States cannot operate military on economical uh, economical way. It is all about huge financial waste. And here we have this is what a Navy spokesperson told Defense News construction of the lead ship of the SSN X. Usually X stands for the next generation uh, of the uh, uh, weapon system program, which will follow the Virginia class attack submarine, is now planned to start in the early 2040s. The Navy last year planned to begin the ship class in 2035, and it was previously set for a 2031 start. This is just absolutely mind-boggling. Why it is mind-boggling? First, it is exposure of the uh, financial and technological inability of what is happening. And let me put it this way. I spoke about this for on a number of occasions. Virginia's are excellent boats. They are. But, as I already stated many times and write about this, uh, they carry in them and obsolete uh, weapon systems and uh, strike weapons. Tomahawks, uh, you know, Tomahawk land attack missile and whatever they're trying to do, this anti-shipping missile, well, still dangerous. It still can wreak havoc a lot, but it is an obsolete system. So goes for the Harpoon in its anti-shipping role. It's an old missile. It's just simply old. And while it still also can, you know, there is always a chance it can leak through the air defenses and, you know, strike some target. No doubt about it, it is dangerous as any weapon system will be. These are obsolete weapon systems which are not really designed to operate in the modern battlefield, especially in the, um, on the surface uh, warfare. And there is another thing. And I will uh, uh, send you back uh, to the memory lane. Remember those uh, situation with the tests of the steel for the Virginias? Well, guess what? Of course, they have been faked, and this is deep diving uh, uh, steel. Uh, it is not necessarily that deep diving, obviously, and Virginia still can operate on, on the regular, you know, up to 200 to 240 meters depth. It is nowhere near of the Russian current fourth generation uh, submarines, such as, for example, Yasin class. And here we, I want to bring you back to uh, Mr. H. I. Sutton, who passes for the expert in submarines for some unknown to me reason the guy is absolutely i mean ridiculous after he stated uh, all those things about rostov on don uh, diesel electric submarine which have been uh, struck primarily by shrapnel in, while staying in the dry dock in sevastopol and he was i mean absolutely 
parading himself as a guy who has no technical expertise whatsoever and he doesn't understand what the dual hull or double hull of Russian submarines is. But I spoke about this before. But let's get to Mr. Sutton and, uh, because it's an exhibit A of the complete uh, illiteracy and propaganda basically. And here what he says. He says, uh, if you look attentively, uh, when it was written, it was uh, written four years ago. Leak may reveal Russia's answer to the Virginia class attack submarine. And he is talking about the Laika, or as known Husky class submarine, which Russians are actually about to start building. It is fully fifth generation sub. And look at this. He obviously, being propagandist as he is, he would never even dare to uh, talk to me because obviously he has no expertise in Russian Navy whatsoever. And he's talking about that it is answer. Uh, the guy is definitely out of his depth, literally, because uh, actually the new class of like a uh, submarine, which is but we, we're going to be seeing them pretty much deployed by 2030 in uh, industrial quantities. That means what? By 2028, approximately, Russia already going to be leading United States submarine force by one generation of submarines. And of course, it will carry missiles and weapons, which United States Navy, uh, for that matter, United States Armed Forces simply do not have. But Mr. Sutton thinks that it is answer. No, it is not an answer to the Virginia class because the answer actually is this and this is the fourth uh, 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 um, generation of Russian submarines and this is of course as you all know this are Yasin class or granny class as they called of the fourth uh, SSGN of the Severodvinsk class they also sometimes call it look at this we have this active, 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 active floated already uh, going to be doing tests this year and then uh, commissioned into the fleet and another four coming. Nine state-of-the-art brand new uh, st uh, missiles uh, carrying the, well, the weapon system which United States has nothing uh, against to, to stop them. And uh, so, and you have another three announced which will be built. So, altogether, you're looking at a serious fleet of the uh, ocean-going nuclear about submarines which care uh, extremely advanced and uh, let me tell you all these uh, things uh, they are already way above in uh, their capabilities than latest Virginia block for um, um, submarines why you must oh well as I already stated you remember this uh, situation with the uh, the fake tests, you know, the, uh, which have been falsified, basically, about the steel of the Virginias. Virginias are officially rated as being able to operate on the depth of up to 140 meters. Well, uh, test depths for the sub modern Russian nuclear-powered submarines is 600 meters. So, do you understand the significance of this? It's more than two and a half times deep. I mean, it's about two, more than two times deeper than uh, to dive than uh, American submarines can do, like Virginia. And then, of course, we're talking about a weapon suit. It's not even in the same league. And then, of course, I want to bring you back to the 1919 and Mr. Norman Palmer and Julian Knott in their very famous book, Russian Submarines, that's what they projected already then. Look at this. This is the dynamics which they give in this book. And if you take a look at those 14 points which they define their estimated U.S. Soviet submarine technologies, uh, as you can see yourself, already in 1970, the Soviet Union was giving the United States the run for its money. And by 2000, <clears throat> although the Soviet Union collapsed, Russia never stopped developing of its submarine uh, uh, component. Look at this. They give only manning quality advantage, which is absolutely not correct. Uh, uh, Russian uh, manning quality of submarines is excellent, superb, in fact. Uh, how I know it, believe me, I know. Then, of course, they talk about passive, passive sonar. It is absolutely equal. And when you look at this, you have already Russian by 2000. Well, in reality, it have been because of the collapse of the Soviet Union delayed by 10 years. By 2010, Russian nuclear submarines, they just have over overwhelming uh, advantage over the United States uh, nuclear-powered submarines. And make no mistake, I'm not saying Virginia's are bad boats. They are excellent boats. But 
first they dive much deeper they are much faster the hull design is much better weapon systems we don't even <coughs> we don't even go there <coughs> pardon me and when you look at this what can i say and here is what they talk about yasin Russia's Yashin class missile such have impressed and worried NATO for years and now Moscow may build more of them. It was uh, two years ago and yes Moscow is building more of them and actually the rate of the submarine construction in Russia not only is not slowing down it's picking up as by the way does the Russian economy as a general uh, and um this is also what they write about this for the first time in russian history the russian navy is able to lay off a european coast coast or in some cases even the continental united states and present land attack cruise missile threat uh, well russian uh, uh, even soviet navy had this capability but of course you need to educate all those so-called uh, uh, expert plankton from the united states about rk uh, uh, rk 55 granat which is also known as a Samson, which already in 1980s was flying more than 3,000 kilometers range, which was outranging the uh, obviously Tomahawk. And this was, very, you know, the very worrying sign for uh, U.S. Navy, for example, because, of, you know, Samson could fly it and guess what? Caliber based its uh, design on that missile, which has been, you know, what used by all those Victor 3 submarines and Akulas can still present time operational Akulas and modernized. They still carry versions of it. So what can I say? Obviously, the sum uh, lesson in history of the uh, naval warfare is due for Mr. H.I. Sutton and those so-called experts who are basically what they do. They hide the facts of the United States beginning to lag behind Russia in terms of the submarine uh, uh, quality and technology. And again, Virginia's an excellent boat, but they cannot dive as they don't have the same speed, they don't have the same weapon suit. And again, as I already stated, in terms of manning personnel, uh, let me put it this way. <clears throat> Take a look at the school education in Russia and in the United States in terms of STEM and compare that. And that will give you some very serious answer about this thing. And if you think so that uh, <clears throat> Manning issue is reduced now to the, some kind of enlisted guys uh, in Russia, you are very wrong. All sailors from the so lowest rank to obviously officers who are graduate of naval academies and others, their lower ranks, are guess what? They are professionals. They serve for years there. They are not enlisted people. So, in terms of manning, well, believe me, I know the quality of their professional preparation. So, th this is not to say that things cannot break down. They do all the time. So, it happens, you know, but again, complex technology. And when you look at this, it's just uh, how about they really learn their subject matter before they come out and talk about some answer? Because Leica Project 545, it's a way beyond the reach of the United States Navy currently and when you look at the fact that they're going to be uh, producing something at the early 2040s can you imagine what Russians will be producing by 2040s and that's the issue isn't it when you already know that the rumor circulates Russia already working on the sixth generation of the submarine whatever the hell that will be you know some transformer but even if you look at Leica it is huge number of the composite materials extremely advanced signal processor that means uh, processing sonar and they carry like the same uh, you know uh, Belgorod which is the fifth generation submarine they will carry a absolute incredible variety of the drones <clears throat> on board so okay here it is and this is what I needed to tell you today guys before you go to your weekend 